And then you always want somebody who characters can in interact with, so it was important to pair the master up with somebody who we could run scenes with. And so Alfred, played by Ryan Gage, is the master's aide to camp. That really does suit you a treat there, sire. Yeah, the Brings out your eyes. Does it? Does it? Does indeed. Mm. There is one mention of my character in the book, not by name, because he didn't have a name. It does say, the master has counsellors. So I am official. I am the master of Lake Town's counsellors. Now, it does say counsellors plural, but in this respect, we just have one. But I am legitimate. He has counsellors, and I counts. Yeah. Do you need a little tinkle, sire? No, 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 I'm fine. Ryan Gage, I think, ended up auditioning for three roles for us, but he was so good and so quick and funny <laughs> and fit into the world so brilliantly that we decided we had to cast him as something and then we said it's got to be Alfred and then Alfred slowly but surely got larger and larger as the tale grew in the telling. Thank you very much. Diane. Well I knew a little bit about Alfred because he's actually the character I auditioned for originally. I mean he was the one that I thought I was best suited to play really. I would played him very differently to how I actually play him in this. I'd played him a lot more like a used car salesman. They're rallying on the streets. They're saying that King will return to the Great Mountain, and the rivers will once more run with gold. Poppycock. These drawers are nothing more than a pack of tinkers and tricksters. Yeah, well, as you say, sire. But people will believe what they want to believe. It wasn't until I sort of got out here and got in the costume and stuff that Alfred became, well, the way he is now, you know. I did two drawings for Alfred, and it was an either-or. Peter loved a slightly posher version of the oily servant. Very, very greasy, black, but oily black, like an oil sump. The textures in the fabrics could either look slimy to begin with or show grease when you broke it down. I suppose you lucky devil get away with one costume. <laughs> Ryan is just marvellous. He has the most expressive eyes. And he does things with his neck, it's marvellously greasy. And I was messing around doing all this neck stuff, trying to figure out a shape for him. It's like it you're crunching your neck right down, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 I think what I'm doing is I'm just pushing it all the yeah. way forward, yeah. and then, and then, yeah. <laughs> and then swiveling. <laughs> the physicality sort of dictated, I think, some of the um, choices of the costume. It was certainly the way the costume was worn. I remember Fran sort of saying, oh yeah, what you need to look like, your chest's collapsed, you know. You need to sort of wear the belt really high and sort of billow out the top part I love the high-waisted belt. Yeah, up, like, up there, sort of somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> it's dreadful up there. It's got a kind of um, tragic, tragic quality up there. It's magnificent. There was this little nuance of an idea where I just shortened his sleeves, and it's like like he's grown out of his costume. It's been the same servant's costume for years. What would it look like if his sleeves were too short? <laughs> <laughs> I seem to remember Fran, she very sweetly said to me that I need flattening out, which means, uh, which is a euphemism for making uglier, which is a nice thing to say, at least she didn't say the other way around. But boy, did they flatten me out, my God. It looks like I've got acne and a mini wig between the eyebrows to unite them in one. And he, right, he has the massive teeth. It's just the most remarkable. <laughs> my teeth are painted. A lot of people come up to me and say, are those teeth uncomfortable? And I... <laughs> have to laugh because they are my teeth, but it's, it's just makeup. And the overall look is just sort of repellent. It's probable that the rather greedy, rather cowardly Alfred thought the day will come when I take over from the master. I don't think the master ever imagined the day will come when he's takeable, overable from a bull. Um, <laughs> and so they've developed this bizarre symbiosis, you know, that, that they kind of need each other. I think Alfred, he doesn't really care for the master. There is no real love there. He's loyal because it, it, it makes sense. That's why you pay me, sire. Yes. Not, not very much. I don't you start complaining about how much you're paid. One of the themes that we've found in The Hobbit is the notion of leadership. What is the meaning of this? And bad leadership in terms of the master of Lake Town. And in Bard, we see a natural-born leader, which is something that Professor Tolkien hints at in The Hobbit. Bard was a character from The Hobbit that we had a lot of fun enhancing more than what he is in the book. And it's actually those hidden talents that Bard has, which are not initially on display, that come into the story later on.